Well, we are so excited to have Cynthia Gamble with us today. Hi, Cynthia. How are you, Dane? So good Great. to see you. So yeah. good to see you. Welcome to our leadership speaker series. Um, I'm just going to give a brief introduction before we get started. Cynthia Gamble is the Chief Relationship Officer at the nonprofit Supriya. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit about what Supriya does. Supriya exists to liberate individuals and society from child sexual abuse and its lasting impacts, which we are intricately involved with, with the policy project and yeah. the Safe Child Project this year. So yeah. we're so grateful for this relationship and partnership in this great cause. Um, here's a little bit about Cynthia. She leads the philanthropic efforts to partner Supriya with corporate entities, nonprofit organizations, and individuals, donors of all sizes. She also oversees innovative fundraising efforts and coordinates the efforts of our national philanthropy team. Cynthia specializes in cultivating relationships, donor engagement, and team supporters with volunteer opportunities. With over 20 years of business community and philanthropic experience, Cynthia relishes opportunities to connect people together in meaningful ways. And that you're so good at that. I've seen her. <laughs> Thank you. Just a little bit about her background. She moved to Argentina at the age of 20. From Argentina, yes. From, sorry, from Argentina and earned an MBA at Brigham Young University and began her career in community organizing and phil philanthropic work. She served with numerous businesses and community boards connected with higher education, performing arts, and causes supporting women and children. Cynthia is the proud mother of four boys, yeah. and um, and we're just so happy to have you here today. Thank you for thank you for having me. I love this leadership series. Like just the word leadership when it comes to our uh, our high school and teenagers is just uh, it, it should always be attached to to this young young generation you know just to be and become leaders so thank you for the invitation yes well one of her personal missions is um her, one of her quotes is one of her personal missions in life is to awaken in others the desire to give and to serve and i just wanted to um ask you where that passion for service began oh that's a great question jane um where how did it begin? Begin. Um, I, like you mentioned, I was born and raised in Buenos Aires, Argentina. I moved here when I was a little bit older than this this audience, you know, mm -hmm. that from the leadership series. Yeah. And um, since I've been here, I I owe this country everything that I always wanted in my life. I wanted mm -hmm. a family. I wanted a career. I wanted an education. Uh, those are three main things that I always wanted. I I was able to accomplish with work and with a lot of setbacks a lot of times, but this country gave me everything that I want. I always dreamed for since I was a little girl, four or five years old. And um, so I owe this amazing opportunity and my way to give back is just to be very involved in the community, find ways to serve and help others. Oh, that is incredible. Well, it sounds like you have really lived the American dream in a sense to come to America and obtain education and a career and family and to do it mm -hmm. so well. Yeah, I, and I learned it uh, and I learned the American dream uh, unlike with some, maybe some other uh, people or even some natives here will think that it's oh it's easy or is is as long as you, no it, it takes a lot of work and i think a lot of uh sacrifices uh a lot of setbacks like i mentioned but i learned i learned the most from those setbacks uh but i've always kept my goal that i wanted those three things in my life and i always work towards it i i've as a woman as a foreign woman as a minority I always thought that having an education was critical to being able to fulfill my dreams in this country. So, although English did not come easy for me as a second language, I I had to I have to endure. And uh, did I want to give up? 
Oh, many times I wanted. Yes. To, of course, I wanted to give up and say I want to go back home. Uh, but um, but anyway, I'm here and I survive and I learn every day. I still learn every day. I still have an accent, right? So anyway, <laughs> beautifully. Tell. I'm curious if you can share with our student ambassadors what you do in a setback situation. I think that'd be really helpful. Um, a lot of times we talk about our successes and mm -hmm. the things we're doing well, the things that went well, but it's all of us have setbacks and all oh, of us will have setbacks if we haven't had them yet. Yeah. Um, so what is some advice you would give to our student ambassadors if they, if something, you know, if they have a setback, maybe you have an experience or something mm -hmm. there. Uh, I think that my, my biggest motivation to still keep going in the middle of all setbacks and setbacks were in the form of discrimination against me uh, uh not understanding the culture uh not being able to make friends as easily as somebody else um so i always kept and this seems, sounds easier said than that but it really is uh keeping that goal. When I moved here to the United States, my father sat me down and I, and I had the choice to stay home or to come here with my mom and dad. And I said, oh, I'll go there. I would like to, I would like to see what it's all about. You know, I grew up in Argentina, the United States was just such a powerful country and said, I, I'm curious. And so my dad said, <laughs> said, you have to come for the right reasons just because you want your curious and, and then you sit back um find find your goals and and find your your why mm -hmm. and then show up along the way my why's i just mentioned education family and a career i kept i kept those in mind and i did not want to disappoint this country Mm. Uh, and I wanted to be a part of a solution to some social problems and social issues and not a burden on this country. So oh, that was beautiful. my goal. <laughs> beautiful. Um, you have a passion for service, and I wondered if you could give some of our teenagers advice. Is there wanting to get involved and give back in the community? Do you have any tips for them as they want to find a way to do that? Yeah, some of uh, a lot of the charities that are a lot of them, all of the charities, just by the mere fact that they are nonprofits, that they're not after uh, money, but they're after finding a solution to a societal problem mm -hmm. of any kind. Uh, being part of that cost driven organization there's always opportunities to um to serve before i became uh the chief relationship officer as a priya i was in the for-profit for many many years mm -hmm. but i always would spend time with nonprofits, serving in boards being involved asking people what they need uh, as i became a mother then I will get my kids involved as well. Raising charitable children is the key of this. So as this group of ambassadors start thinking about their future, families, uh, whatnot, um, they, you cannot change uh, their mind to serve everybody all of a sudden. Uh, it's a process that starts from the very, very, very beginning of their lives taking them to service projects and activities and, and things like that. But I, I do believe that um, in my personal case, being involved with something that resonates, there's in Utah alone, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of charities mm -hmm. uh, that are trying to solve different problems. Which one is near and dear to your heart? Which one resonates with you? Mm -hmm. Is it a health issue? Is it a social issue? Is it a is it a societal issue that has to do with hunger and and education and 
literacy, whatever it is, find a comfortable uh, space that resonates in your life. Find a charity that is trying to solve that particular problem, align with them, offer help in a consistent basis, not one-offs. I don't like one-offs. I like to see our volunteers that are consistent, that they come mm -hmm. around and they are genuinely interested in the cause and the problem that we are trying to solve. In this case, it's child sexual abuse, but there's so many other ones. Yeah, yeah. Find what, find what resonates with you, what makes you happy to know that you are a reason to make somebody happy or to solve a problem or to find a solution. Yeah, I love that. There are, Utah is so great about having so many nonprofits. Uh, I also was thinking as you were sharing that about ways that they could individually do service. And I know of a student ambassador that we have who is musically talented and she goes to a healthcare center and plays every oh. other for the people in a memory care facility. And that's something that's identified, like you said, something that resonates with her and then yeah. using that gift to serve. Um, I also love that idea of finding, just find an organization that resonates with you and offer your help and do it yeah. on a consistent basis. Yeah. This month we um, we talked about the steps of running a service project. And that, that is also an option like in your community, in your high school, in your, at your church that you belong to, um, these students have opportunity to also build out and lead in service. Um, what ways are you involving, um, are there opportunities at Supriya for teens to get involved? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. There's, as like any nonprofit, we rely upon these volunteers. We don't have all the funds available to pay uh, certain people to do certain things. So yeah. if you have a skill set that meets our needs, by all means, we, we always try to uh, offer opportunities. To me, the secret is for uh, this for any one of us that really has the desire to serve is to show up and yeah. to show up for the right reasons. Yeah. I know that when we are young and we're trying to get into schools and to show or get a job, all these things that we do are very, very helpful to put down on a resume or an application for college. Those are a given. But at the end of the day, I really, love seeing the youth come and serve our nonprofit for the right reason. Mm -hmm. And all the other benefits should be secondary. Yeah. Um, the primary purpose should be, uh, I want to serve because it is in me. It makes me a better person, less selfish. It makes me forget about my own problems. And um, any time that we concentrate on serving others, it's funny how it works. It's no matter how many issues we have to deal with at home or their friends or boyfriend, girlfriend, we forget about that. It's, it's, it's instant, it's instant. It's almost like a miracle that happens, you know? Said, it hey, does. You can always go back to the problems, they'll be there for you. Yes, uh, they will. <laughs> uh, but those two hours, those what show up. If you say you're gonna show up, show up. I love that. Um, well, that is so great. I have loved this conversation. I wanted to ask you another question. Um, any advice for our student ambassadors who want to work in the nonprofit sector, who have found that they love service, that they love making an impact and are thinking about possibly going into work in the nonprofit sector, you 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 are there right now is there any advice like in um in an educational track or in their preparation yeah. through school that you would give to them sure um i i have the opportunity to go on and speak um uh, at byu and the mpa program mm. uh, master of public administration uh in the mba program as well 
there's there's a special kind of audience every time I go and speak to the um, masters of public administration. Those are people who um, eventually they will end up in some sort of public service or nonprofit service in their careers. Yes, education is important. I think that we need a lot more skilled uh, leaders in the nonprofit. Just because it's a nonprofit and and they have this sometimes a bad rap because it's a nonprofit, uh, we still need the leadership. We still need the knowledge. We need to we need to learn to run nonprofits like we we will run any other business or any exactly. other. Mm -hmm. And and we are lacking of that leadership that can just feed into the nonprofit. So that's number one. Get an education, and and if even if you don't feel like that's where you want to land, but there's something that is telling you that you want, just investigate. Read, you know, um, you don't need an MPA to to come and work in the nonprofit. It's very helpful, but it's not indispensable. So we really need to get the the leadership well trained, well educated, and and we need that for sure. Um, if if your calling in life, for lack of a better word, is to help others, I always felt that that was my calling in life. I don't know if it was because of what I said. I came from a different country. I felt like I owe it, like I needed to make a difference here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, but find your why. Find what makes you tick and then, you know, go for it. But education to me is critical. Mm, love that well it has been so great to talk to you if you have any thoughts that you weren't able to share that you want to share this is this is your moment we'd love to um hear anything else and also we do need to hear just a little bit about Sapria. oh and, um so can you yeah yeah the last couple minutes here um about yeah. your passion and um and yeah I've been with Sapria now for seven years, over seven years, and um, I have seen uh, a change in our society as to how we deal with the issue of child sexual abuse. One in every four girls, one in every six boys, so it's one in every five altogether by the age of 18 will be sexually abused in this country. And... Um, the trauma, the childhood trauma that uh, happens to a child that is just growing up and it's, it really lingers throughout all the, their life into adulthood. And, and a lot of these women and men haven't done anything about their healing, how to heal from a childhood trauma like that. So that's where we come in. We help adult women heal from the, uh, the trauma that for no fault of their own happened to them. We also help a lot of parents, uh, all these ambassadors, parents and beyond, we really need them to understand. And this is a lot what the policy project is helping us with to yeah. create that sort of you know, awareness and, and raise the level of awareness and prevention uh, of something that really is happening too much, is too prevalent. Uh, there is a stigma, but it's still something that needs to be done. So we're trying to find a way to a way to be safe and talk about a very very heavy subject. So if anybody uh, of your audience is going through that or know of somebody that is going through that, please 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 contact us. As Will you tell us how to contact you? Because sure. I bet that there is someone watching. Yeah. Yeah, it's very easy. Sapria.org. Go online. S A P R E A. Sapria.org. And all of it is a, is a very robust website where you will find all kinds of information, including uh, signing up for our healing uh, journey and healing retreats and get more education and get involved. Get involved and believe your friends, family members that are disclosing to you, believe them. Mm -hmm. And it's the best 
that we can do for the survivors of child sexual abuse believe that that actually did happen to them yes uh, as to my last words um i always say this to all the students uh when i get to lecture i go you guys if i was able to do it you can too i love that well it has been such a pleasure to have you on today and just really appreciate your time and the things that you shared with us. I think that um, the pieces that really have stuck with me are that with education and work and desire, you can accomplish anything you want to. And you've, you've shown us that. So thank you so much for being with us today. And um, we look forward to working with you uh, as we go across the state this year and hope that you student ambassadors can join us at one of our community events from St. George to Logan. Yes, we're going to be to all of them. We're going to be, we'll be at all of them and I will be there too. And we'd love to see you go to our website and um, you can find out more information about those meetings. So yes. thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. And thank you for all you do. Keep up the good work. Okay. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Okay.